Perfect. Hello, everyone. Hi. We're late. 6.01 p.m. We were busy. We were at the gym. Then we got pulled over by the cops. And by we, she means me, <laughs> because she, as as one should, as soon as you've seen the police, run the other way. I learned from you. That's right. We're yeah, so when we were, the gym is like walking distance. So we walked to the gym, and then when we came back, Levi gets so excited when he sees us. So I let him out of the house, and he came running out. And then the um, and then he ran back in and got his toy because he wanted to play. He went into the house, yeah. got the toy, ran back outside. We were playing with him. The Leisure Village Police Department rolled up on us. And then I ran back in the house. <laughs> and, and you uh, had to talk I, to the cops. I got to talk to Officer Scary. <laughs> so that was the afternoon excitement. Um, other announcements. I'm going to be in Tennessee this weekend teaching a clinic. So we better make this fast because I have not packed. There also is a link either above or below this video for you to download a free PDF on the training scale. The training scale is very important. Why should we know about the training scale? It gives you a plan, a blueprint to how to pr progress. Yes. The training scale is everything. The training scale is the basics. The training scale is how you solve problems. It's how you train a horse at the levels. It's like, if you don't know the training scale, you know nothing. I'll tell you a funny story. I, when I was a young rider, I went to a clinic with George Williams and I was on this horse who was kind of naughty. And I show up at the clinic and the first thing George Williams asked me is he was like, what are the levels of the training scale from bottom to top? And I was very embarrassed because I could not recite them. So you should know the levels of the training but, scale. I mean, if you're going to be riding on your own and having to do some problem solving, then at least the bottom. Yeah, you need to know. Yeah, you or need you to can, know the training scale. You can analyze what's going on and then go, okay, I don't have this element. And then you can go do some exercise that would improve that. Hello, everyone that's watching. Just jump it. Hello. That's Hi. A great Nella. Tag. That's a great handle. Joanne. That's a tag. What is that? It's, I guess it's her username on that's YouTube. That's a good username. Just jump, Just jump it. The other thing. Um, so for those of you guys that are in the 30 day rider position challenge, we're coming to the end of the challenge. The final videos are due on Saturday and then next Thursday, you don't know this yet, but next Thursday, <laughs> I always love these we're going to be, on the Facebook. we're going to be announcing the winners of the rider position challenge. We're going to be giving away $5,000 next Thursday. Someone's going to be happy. So the top five winners, which is really fun. It's been a really fun challenge. It's been fun to see everyone making progress, working on their position. It's hard to change your bad habits in your position. That is for sure. So uh, next week we'll be announcing the winners. And for those of you guys that are in the challenge, you definitely want to join us in strides. This month in strides, the topic is throughness. How would you describe throughness, honey? Throughness, it's, it's that feeling that the horse is balanced and you can feel the energy in your hand and it just keeps recycling through. Throughness is a beautiful thing. When you it's, feel it, it's like if you just feel like you could do anything with your horse. And it is that except the simultaneous acceptance of the leg in the hand which is hard because usually you get one or the other, like either the horse is listening to your leg or they're listening to the rain, but it's hard to get both of them. Well, it's very Zen. You got to hold without holding. That's, um, who taught me that one? Morton. Hold, without, hold without holding. Yeah. That was Morton. So anyways, in strides this month, throughness is the topic. I will be doing a lecture Tuesday night of all about throughness and Another funny story. I took my horses down to ride with Yo Hinneman Monday, Tuesday, which is awesome. It's so great to get help from a good coach like Hinneman. And he told me that none of my horses are through enough. So apparently I still need to work on throughness. But I think throughness is something that you're always striving towards. Like, I don't know that your horse can ever be through. It, well, and then, oh, it you, gets but more you just and more. keep leveling up, right? right. Um, I, you know, we all just rise up to our level of incompetence. That's <laughs> that's the best we can do. Yes. Okay. Do you have anything to add? 
No. I'm... What are your stories for this week? Tell them about your fish. Oh, yes. So we had made plans. Amelia and I had made plans to get together. On oh, you Sunday. don't have to tell them that part. And then <laughs> she had to do a Facebook at 1.30. So then I was like, yeah, it's not that big a deal. So then Shane called and said the weather was good. And off we went to go diving again. And I got a 30 pound halibut, which just made my year. Hopefully I get some more this year, but I have scared so many fish this year and that thing was huge and I got it and I was very happy. And then I made tacos at the barn uh, for all the guys at work there and the other trainers. And so that was really fun. Yes, Herman's fish tacos are the best thing ever. They're my favorite meal. I, and I think whenever we have parties, we always make fish tacos. Yeah. Because they're they're just they're awesome. They're the best ever. So I do appreciate having fish tacos. Okay, questions. Um, here's a good question that I actually filmed a video on today. When you're preparing for show season, how often are you practicing your entire test? Do you break it down by element all the time, or do you do full run throughs sometimes? Yeah, full run throughs sometimes. Um... As it gets, as it gets close to the date, two, three weeks out, I'll run through the whole test and go, okay, I like these parts. I don't like these parts. And then over the next few days, I'll try and fine tune the parts that um, I didn't like as much. And then, you know, I'll just do that for a few days and then I'll run through the test again and see, and I'll run through the test a few times to see if it's consistent. Uh, but I just play with it. I just sprinkle all that in. Yeah. So what's important is that you if you just keep going through the test pattern over and over again and it's not good and you're just practicing the same mistake over and over again then that's not productive so you want to start playing with some of the movements but then you have to really analyze and go back and figure out why it's not working and what to do to make it better so and going back to the training scale since that's kind of the theme for the month of june for us is the training scale i'm doing a free webinar on the training scale at the end of june we have that free pdf for you but when you're showing and you get your test sheet at the top corner of every test sheet it says the purpose of the level and the first sentence is that the horse has to demonstrate correct basics the correct basics are the training scale so rhythm, suppleness, and connection. That means that you have to practice your test a little bit, but then you have to improve each movement by improving the basics. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. And so if like you go to a shoulder in and you find that you're okay, oh, my, I, as soon as I start the shoulder in, I've lost the tempo, I've lost the rhythm. Okay, so now what do we do? But well, we go ride some transitions forward. We ride shoulder in into uh, a lengthening. We, you start doing some exercises to deal with that part of the training scale that just went away when you did the hard thing. Yeah, but that's one of the biggest mistakes I see people make is that they just practice the test over and over again, and they don't improve it. They don't think about like, okay, why is my horse putting its head up in the canter? What do I need to do to improve that? How can I you know, break this down and explain it to my horse and actually make it better rather than just going through the test over and over again. So there's a balance. Okay, here's a question. Throughness can also be felt in your seat, right? I have been able to feel my horse's hind feet in my seat and some of my lateral work. Awesome. Yes, that is absolutely true. You, they, they, you just feel them lift you and set you and they lift you and they set you and they don't run past the bit. They just lift you and set, and it's it's quite lovely. Yeah. <laughs> I think when your horse is through, you're able to ride more from your seat as opposed to riding, you know, just from your hand and from your leg, I guess is a good way to say it. Okay, next question. How do I keep an older horse at the canter? Aster is a school horse. He knows walk to canter, but doesn't want to stay in the canter. So he slows down after a few strides, but only with me. The other riders, he stays cantering perfectly. Even if you, I use my whip, he'll slow down. What should I do? All right, so my my best guess is you're not cantering with your seat. You're getting the transition, but then your body isn't making the canter motion. That would be my best guess. Yeah. Not being able to see what you do, but you say that the other riders can make him canter. 
uh, and you can get him into the canner, but then he's falling out of the canner. So you're not doing uh, the human horse body canner. The human, the human part <laughs> of the canner, right? The horse has to canner, but the human has to canner too. Yes, your you have seat, a different seat for your the seat has to follow that motion of your horse's back. I'm guessing by your laughter, it didn't make a lot of sense there. I'm going to go with that. <laughs> Um, the other thing is that you, your timing is really important. And so when you're like, can't, you're going canner, canner, and you feel your horse starts to slow down, you've got to be able to quickly kind of, yeah, ask for canner again without it disrupting that motion of your seat. And so, so that's the hard part. Time and miles. The, the longer, the, the answer to that is time and miles. I think that's the answer to everything in riding. We used to go to this barn in Germany when we would go horse shopping and there was this written like mural on the wall and it said the only way to get better at riding is by riding. So that's yeah. pretty much it. Um, oh, good. Lori's here. The other thing. So this weekend I'm going to Tennessee. Next weekend I'm going to be doing the Horse Expo in Sacramento. So I have a busy few weeks coming up and I hope to get to see some of you guys. Next question is from Allison. How do I get my older horse supplement through? What exercises should I do both in the saddle and out of the saddle? Older horse, supple and through on an older horse. What exercises? I the, think like, with an well, older you need horse, to walk and lots of walking. Walk and yeah. serpentine. So older horses usually take longer to warm up. I don't know that lots the leg yield. Yeah, I don't know if the leg yield would be so super there, but um, serpentine for sure. And then to try, you could serpentine too. Yeah. So serpentines, you can do some leg yields once the horse is a little bit more warmed up, but just with an older horse, the more you can keep them moving, the better, I would say. Uh, Nicole, what do you do with youngsters before they're ready for under saddle work? Uh, familiarize them with everything, like you, wherever you are, um, take them around the property, let them see stuff, um, you know, be used to the equipment, all that. Yeah, but I I think that there's a balance that you don't want to do too much when they're too young because when they're like I mean when they're yearlings and two year olds they really just need to be out in a field with other horses. That's the best education oh, that they. Yeah, can no, get. I was thinking maybe just before you were going to break yeah. them or start them. We don't say that anymore. Just before you start them. Yeah. I but, was thinking that was a question, not like two, two. They, yeah, you want to, you want to be them familiar and think, oh, people are good. I mean, I got a horse that was four years old and never been handled, and that was exciting. Um, but you don't want to overhandle them because right. a lot of people, especially when they breed their own horses, they tend to spoil them and overhandle them, and then they take all of the instincts I have a funny out story. of the horse. I'm afraid. <laughs> so there was, he was six months old and it was very cute. And they were, you know, well, it actually was three months. And so he put his hooves on their chest when he gave cookies like dogs do. And I thought, wow, this is going to be a terrible idea later when the horse gets bigger. And um, so, yeah, when he got bigger and was still doing it and uh, took the lady's forearm with his teeth off hit the other one in the head. Yeah. Um, and the owner had told yeah. me he's my horse and he has to get used to the way I do things. And I thought, wow, that's going to be painful lesson to learn or yeah. unlearn. So yeah. anyway, the part of that, the moral of that story is that um, when they're cute and small, remember it, that they're, they're going to be get really big, big and it won't be so cute then yeah. because they're big. So you be careful what you teach them. Yes. Yes. Horses are wonderful with boundaries and that's really important i mean we love our horses and we want to be kind and we want to have a good relationship but everybody needs to be safe yes and boundaries are what allows you to have a good relationship with your horse so um okay i saw a question up here that we missed any tips of cantering without getting scared and tensing up get lunged put it in a put it in a bullpen just do breathe it. <laughs> Demonstrate your breathing techniques well, again. Well, it's different. It's, when, when you're tense, you don't do 
<laughs> you don't you don't do hysterical breathing. So how do you breathe when you're tense? I do a lot of flappy lips when I'm tense. Really? And I sing Charlie Daniels too. Which song is Charlie Daniels? Um the devil went down to Georgia. I do that oh, song. Oh, yeah, yeah. When I ride the young horses and they're getting all kind of full of beans and one around, <laughs> I do the devil. I sing the devil went down to Georgia. Yes, I do. Okay. Because that just keeps me breathing. When do you introduce spurs to a young horse? It depends. A lot of times I'll start out. The yeah, young I don't horse even know that that's a thought for me. I just wear them. Yeah. But we, but then again, I, I don't accidentally poke my horses with spurs either. So yeah. there's that. And we usually wear um, small, like like soft ended spurs. We're not yeah, mine like, are round and short. Yeah. Mine are about uh, a quarter, a quarter of an inch, inch long and yeah. round. So not like big old rowels. Yeah. Okay. Next question is from Joanne. I had a thought about future challenges. A couple of my clients are struggling with fear after falling so maybe a challenge to overcome fear that's a good idea although i don't know that i'm qualified for that i think we need like a psychologist to do that yeah it's a hard i mean fears. it's a hard thing i was scared once and i hated it so it was never that way again <laughs> that's my story and i'm sticking that's, to it that would be a good challenge that would be great the fear challenge with her <clears throat> You know that I think you're good at getting people to overcome fear because they're more afraid of you than. Well, that I try, I do that on occasion, make them more afraid of me than the horse. <laughs> oh my gosh! Okay, um, what should I do with a young horse who always likes to tense up and not listen to my questions? Um, bend, bend and turn. Yeah, and maybe do that on the ground before you get on and already get them focused. You'd be well. You saw me do that today with uh, with that one horse that was who was young and totally unfocused, and I walked around the arena with him. Yes, groundwork. If you can't get it on the ground, you're not going to be able to get it under saddle. So, groundwork is a very good option. Okay, next question is from Patty. I'm taking my six year old to the first show. Goal is for him to That's be awesome. relaxed. Um, any recommend goal is for him to be relaxed. Any recommendations for what to do when I get to the showgrounds the day before the show? He's very visual, his head goes up when he sees stuff. Lots of walking Thanks. and have some extra time. Just do not be in a hurry and don't get flustered. Super patient, yeah. And it's I'll a show, things are going to happen. Just know that ahead of time and just plan for that by having some extra time. and there you go. And also, I like to work on getting them to put their head down, like doing a pull release, getting them to put their head down, and then also being able to walk them forward and put their head down. And then the other thing is, a big part of that is the, the horse is looking to you for some leadership. So you need to offer that. Whatever happens, you tell yourself, I've got this, Junior. I, you, don't worry about it. I got you. We're going to handle this. If the horse panics, don't panic with him. <laughs> right? Just, just tell yourself that whatever happens, it's going to be okay. Maybe not right now, but in five minutes, I'm going to have this. Yes. The panicking handler plus panicking horse. It's just, and I've seen it. That's why yeah. I mentioned it. It's like, okay, you know you're taking a six-year-old, and God knows what's going to happen. It, just whatever happens, you tell yourself, I can handle it. Yes. Okay. Um, next question is from Lizanne. How to slow down a young horse that rushes and races around when posting the trot? What all should I be doing other than slowing down my posting, which hasn't seemed very effective? Uh, I would do spiraling circles into the walk and spiraling circles back out into the tron. Spiraling, so because as you make the circle smaller, it's more difficult. And then he can listen to the aid. Uh, but I just put it on a circle and spiral in and out. Next question. I can finally get my horse to pick up the canter. She hops with her shoulders and it's taken me a while to sit up and go with her. I'm having a hard time keeping the canter. We kind of answered that already at the beginning. So watch the beginning of this again. 
Uh, next question is from Lawrence. This is a good question. When you go to a show, how do you decide how many dressage tests to do each day? I've heard mixed things such as two tests, one is easier, one that you're showing. On my younger horses that I need to school them a little bit more, I'll sign up for two. If the first one goes well, I probably won't do the second one. But I have it as a backup. The first one, you know, things go awry and horse panics. And I want to make, you know, I want to hedge my bets and and have a positive experience there. So I'll sign up for the second one. But generally, it's just one. If yeah. my horse is pretty uh, reliable and I know what I've got, I'll just do the one. If it's a question mark, I'll sign up for two with the idea that if it goes well, the first one, I'm not doing the second one. Yeah. So if you're doing the lower levels, like if you're doing training level or first level, you could do two tests per day. But if you're doing the upper levels, like third, I would say for sure, a third, third level up, and up. You don't want to be doing too many of those. In a yeah, day. because it's a lot more stress. Like once you're doing collected movements, that's a lot harder on your horse and you don't want to do two of those tests per day. The lower levels, and especially if it's like a green horse and like her mom said, if maybe the first ride is like tense or you have a problem and you want to get the horse out a second time. But I usually just do one test per day. Uh, but, you know, it's a little bit up to you. But for sure, the upper, upper levels, you don't want to do two tests per day. Right. That was a good question. Um, okay, next question is from Sarah. My horse connects better with a flash nose band, but she carries more tension in her back and can, can be jiggy or nervous. Am I better off riding without a flash if it makes her more tense? I don't know. It depends. I might try riding with it looser. But I think horses are really creatures of habit. And so at least like Harvey, my horse Harvey. He's a wonderful horse. He's my favorite horse, but he does not like change. If I change anything, if I put a different saddle on him, if I change the bit, if I put a different bridle on him, it's like the world is coming to an end. So I think with sensitive horses, you just have to try to be consistent, try to keep everything the same and they'll get used to that, whatever it is. But the more you change stuff, the worse it is for horses that are really sensitive. So think um, you're in the information gathering stage. You're gathering information. Try it looser. Try it higher. Try it lower. Try without it and find the thing that seems to relax your horse the most and just go gather some information. Yes. All right. Um, I think that's it because I have a lot to do tonight. I have to pack. I leave tomorrow to go to Tennessee. <clears throat> I'll be teaching a clinic and apparently I'm giving a lecture during lunch on Saturday. So that's going to be Surprise. interesting. I'm, I'm going to be teaching happen. all day and then, <laughs> and then talking about half halts. So that will be fun. I think half halts are a hot topic. I'm excited for the clinic. I don't like leaving my horses or my wonderful husband, but it will be fun. And be sure to download my free PDF on the training scale. It's either above or below this video. There's some really great information in there that I know will help you to plan your ride and be more effective with your training, save some time and stress. I know the training scale helps me a lot when I run into problems. And that's there it. You have it. So okay. thank y'all. Good night, everyone.